In this tutorial, I will show you a quick and effective method for adding fog to your 3D scenes in Blender. And this method for adding fog will work really great in both Cycles and Eevee. So you can see right up here on the screen, here is this scene rendered in Blender Eevee, but then here is the same exact scene, but rendered in Cycles Render. So this method for fog works great in both Cycles and Eevee. And then at the end of this video, I will show you how to animate the fog, so stick to the end if you'd like to see how to do that as well. Now, if you'd like to learn how to create a mist effect in Blender, then I have a different tutorial on how to create a mist effect in Blender, and it uses Blender mist pass and the compositor to get this really cool mist effect. I will have the links in the description and a card right up there on the screen if you'd like to watch that tutorial. Real quick before we start, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. Those are all great ways to help support me and this channel. You can also show your support by sending a super thanks underneath this video. So for demonstration for this tutorial, I threw together this little city scene here and it's nighttime. And to help me create the scene very quickly, I did use some 3D models and assets and textures from Ambient CG and also Polyhaven. And I also downloaded some models from BlendSwap and the moon image was also from Pixabay. So I will have links in the description to those different websites. So to create the fog, we first need to create an object which is going to cover the entire scene. And then we're going to be adding a fog material to that object. So let's press shift A and I'm gonna go here to mesh and I'm going to add a cube. And then I'm gonna zoom out here and I'm gonna scale this cube way up. I'm gonna scale the cube up really big so it fills the entire scene. And I can also tab into edit mode, kind of scale this sideways, maybe also scale it down on the Z axis a little bit. Basically, it just needs to fill the entire scene. So once you've done that, we can hop over to the shading tab and make sure you still have that giant cube selected. And I'm gonna add a new material here in the shader editor. And I can just call this like fog. Now to create the fog material, I'm gonna click on the principled VSDF and I'm gonna press X to delete it. And let's press Shift A, and I'm gonna go here to the search, and I'm gonna search for the principled volume. So we're just gonna add the principled volume shader right here. And then I don't wanna plug it up to the surface. This is a volume, so I wanna plug the volume up to the volume on the material output. And again, this will work great in both Cycles and Eevee. I'm gonna be using Blender Eevee just so that you can preview it better because it will preview in real time, but this totally works in Cycles as well. So when you first add this in, you can can see that it's just fully black and that is because of this density. So I need to turn the density down to make the fog less dense. So I can just for starters turn this down to like a 0.1 and you can now see that there is lots of fog. Although the fog is very very strong and it's really hard to see anything through the fog. So I could turn this down even more so on the density I could turn it down to like a 0.05 or maybe just like a 0.02 or even smaller like a 0.01 if I want to be able to see some things more in the background. And you can also change the color of the fog as well if you'd like to. So right here on the color, I can click on this and I can change it to any color that I want. I think it's kind of weird to change it to a color that looks kind of weird. So I'm just gonna leave it as white, but I'm gonna make it fully bright. So I'm gonna turn it all the way up to fully white. And you can also see that there is some glowing here. And part of that is just the fog being lit up. But part of that is also because I turned on the bloom feature in Blender Eevee. So if you're using Blender Eevee, you can turn on this bloom feature right here. And this is in the render property and it's just gonna add a little bit of a glow around bright objects. And if you're using Cycles Render and you want some sort of glow, you could add the glare node in Blender's compositor after the scene renders. And just to show you, I've switched over to Cycles Render and you can see here is the render in Cycles and I am using the viewport denoising to kind of denoise the image, but you can see the fog looks great in Cycles as well. So this fog is very cool, but the density of this fog is distributed evenly all over the scene. And so if that's the look that you're going for you can just leave it like that but I want some parts to be a little bit more dense and some parts to be a bit less dense so what we can do is we can actually put a texture into the density and then some parts will be more dense and other parts will be less dense so to do this I'm going to press shift a here in the shader editor I'm going to click on the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture let's click on the noise texture and drop it down here and then I will be using a feature from the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the add-on enabled, you can just click on edit and open up the preferences. And then right here in the user preferences, you can go over to the add-ons tab. And right over here on the search, you can search for node and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. It's built into Blender, so you can just check mark that and then it will be turned on. So now because I have the Node Wrangler enabled, I can select the noise texture and I can press Control T. And that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now I want to use the object coordinates 
because the object coordinates are going to place the texture on the object more evenly. So I'm going to plug the object into the vector on the mapping. And I will keep the mapping node for now because we actually will be using the mapping node later. So now to preview this noise texture, I can control shift and select the noise texture. And again, that is using a feature from the node wrangler add-on. So now I can zoom out of my scene and we can see what this is doing. So this noise texture is adding this noise all over the object. And then to give the fog more detail, I'm going to turn the detail level all the way up to the max, which is 15. And you could also turn the roughness value up if you wanted to give it some more roughness. I'll just leave the roughness at 0.5 for now. So these white and black areas are going to tell the fog to be more dense and less dense. So now instead of using this density value, we can use the texture instead. So let's take the factor and we're going to plug that into the density. And then I can just control shift and select the principled volume and that'll get rid of the view so we can just preview the volume. So right now you can see that it's just fully black and that's because it's way too strong. So we need to control the color values of the noise texture. So to do that, I'm gonna press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm gonna search for a color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and I'm gonna drop it right in here between the noise texture and the principled. So now I can play around with the color ramp colors and that's gonna change how dense it is. So if I click on this white tab, I can click on the color and I can make it darker and darker. And you can see that as I turn this down and as the noise texture becomes darker you're able to see through the fog better so if these values are darker the fog is going to be less dense and then to make it more contrasty I'm going to drag these values together and as I drag it together they're going to be very contrasty so you can see now that I've dragged these really closely together this kind of looks more like smoke so there's like a bunch of billowing smoke and that is pretty cool if you wanted to add smoke into your scene that would be a really cool way to do it but I don't want it to be that contrasty so I can drag these farther apart from each other and you can see it's going to be less contrasty and then I can also click on this white tab and let's make this white tab darker so that you can see through the fog better and now that the fog is less dense and you can see through it better I could make this just a little bit more contrasty and there we go so we now have some really cool fog in our 3d scene and if you wanted to make this fog even more detailed you could turn up this roughness value and you can see as I turn up the roughness value now if you zoom in there you can see the fog is very very detailed whereas if I turn the roughness down then those pieces are going to be much larger and you can also get a similar effect with the detail amount so if you turn the detail down then the fog is going to be much less detailed whereas if you turn the detail up then there's going to be a lot more detail there in the fog now if you want to change the placement of where the fog is you can use this mapping node and so if you change these values that is going to change where the fog is so you can change the scale using this noise texture scale you can drag the scale value on the noise texture um, but you can also change the location rotation and scale of the fog using the mapping. So you can see if I drag these values, it's gonna change the X location, the Y location, and the Z location. You can also change the rotation if you wanna kind of rotate the fog, and of course you can scale the fog. So that is a great way to make fog for a static image, but let's say you wanna animate the fog. So there's two main values that can be really effective for animating the fog. So one value that you can change is the location. So if you wanna make it look like there is some wind in your animation, you could animate either the Y or the the X values or you could animate them both at the same time and that is going to move the fog kind of back and forth. You could also move it up and down on the Z value but I think normally wind would kind of be moving back and forth along the ground so you could just animate these values and then that's going to animate the fog. Now the other way to animate the fog is to generate different noise. So what I can do on this noise texture is I can click on the 3D and I'm going to change it to 4D and now that I've changed it to 4D we have this W value right here and as I change this it's going to change the randomness of the fog so just to show you I'm gonna control shift and select the noise texture to preview it and then I'm gonna zoom out here so now if I drag the W value you can see it's kind of randomizing the noise and so we can animate this value and that's going to randomize and change the fog so I'm gonna control shift and select the principled volume again so to animate the fog I first need a timeline so I'm gonna bring my mouse right up here when the crosshair appears and then I can click and drag down that's going to split the window and then right here I can click on this to change the editor type and I'm going to change this to the timeline and then I can click and drag right here to bring this over to frame one so what I want to do now is add keyframes at frame 
one. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the W value, and then I can press the I key. And that is going to insert a keyframe. So you can see now right here on the timeline, there is that little yellow diamond, and that is telling us there's a keyframe there. And this value is also highlighted as yellow. And then I can also do the same thing for the location. So again, I can just hover my mouse over the values and then press I, and that is going to insert a keyframe. And then what I can do is I can drag over here and I'm going to go to the end frame, which is like 250, and I can now just change these values. So I'm going to hold down the shift key as I drag this, and that is going to make my movements more sensitive. And I'm going to change this maybe to just like a 0.5. And then once I've set that to a value that I like, I can hover my mouse over this value and press I again, and that is going to insert another keyframe. And then I can also change the location, click, drag down, and then drag back and forth, and that's going to change the values at the same time. And I'm just going to drag the X and Y values, and I'm just going to move them over a little bit. And then again, hover your mouse over the values, and you can press the I key, and that's going to insert a keyframe. So I can just make this view bigger now, and I can scrub through the timeline, and you can see now the fog is animated, so that is very cool. And then if you want to make the fog move at the same speed throughout the whole animation, you can make the keyframes linear. So I'm going to select the mapping, hold down the shift key, and select the noise texture and then just press the A key in the timeline to make sure all of those keyframes is selected. I can then press the T button and the T button is going to bring up the set keyframe interpolation and on default it's set to the BZA but I'm instead going to change it to linear and this way the animation is going to stay at the same speed so instead of kind of speeding up and then slowing down as it goes to the end it'll stay at the same speed. And here is the final animation. And again, if you'd like to learn how to use Blender's Mist Pass to get a result like this, where you have kind of mist far back in your scene, then I have a different tutorial on that. That's kind of a different method on how to make fog or mist. I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to check out that tutorial. And I am trying to create Blender tutorials and Blender content for a living. So if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can check out my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. Those are all really great ways to help support me and this channel. But I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.